glove was me. <laughs> that would require a breakdown in the chain of command. Uh, yeah. Captain's log. It's been well over 22 days since the incident on Romulus. The Kismet is finally about to get back underway. And I've been called in for a meeting with what's the Admiral's name? Heffa? No, nah, no, 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 there's a different one. Um, hang on, I've got it. Oh, yes. I'm to have a, uh, I'm to have a rather informal celebration with Rear Admiral David Ludwinger. I'm not particularly looking forward to this, but uh, a party is a party, I suppose. End log. And we come to Narinder Station. And I should put you guys on. There's not... There you are. The Gizmet docked with the station. Uh, you guys have been here for a little bit. There was a brief stint where the Kismet had to jump away and uh, helped bring escort a ship, the Aegis. Um, they were in mild distress. There wasn't a whole lot to it, but that's been the most the Kismet's been able to do for the last while. So, for the last bit, you have been hanging about the station. Um, my question would be, uh, what would people be doing uh, with their, shall we say, extended shore leave? Do we want serious answers? Well, if you want my serious answer, the captain has been a mixture of brooding in his ready room, brooding in his private chambers, watching hollow shows on the holodeck, and... Oddly enough, this is something that he hadn't done a ton of before. Um, every once in a while, you might see him uh, sitting in the uh, the. Uh, don't know if it's a mess hall. Do we? Is are we a? Um, do we have like a ten forward type deal? We do. Oh yeah, seven every forward. ship does. Yeah. yeah. Seven Go forward ahead. on the Luna class. Okay, I just forgot whether or not if, if it was like a full on ten forward type deal, or if it was just a mess. Closer to ten forward than Voyager. Has. Okay. True. Okay. So yeah, uh, he's gone there uh, a, a bit more than usual. I'm sorry. Where was that again? Um. What? Uh, I'm gonna check your focuses real quick. My focuses. Um. You know what? I'm gonna ask you for. Oh. Uh, no. Since you're a little distracted, I'm gonna call for an insight command complication two difficulty two. Um, the hell? Uh, you're going to get it's going to be your focus of diplomacy this is you catching wind of something while you're kind of hang on just... I don't see my character sheet anymore I do oh, it, oh it's because I'm a player now <laughs> oh hold on <laughs> maybe I should I'll give you access to it I guess <laughs> I no longer have access to my own character I think he's telling you something I think he's saying that you're not going to be around much longer oh no pen for captain <laughs> Ask Captain. You usually have access to everyone's character sheet. The Admiral was not pleased with your work. There you are. And why are you all the way down there? Why? Okay, whatever. There. Ha. Huh. There you go. You should see yourself now. Uh, there we go. Uh, what did you say? Difficult. Uh, you said insight. In command. Command. Uh, complication range two. Yep. And with your focus in diplomacy, you're you're just hearing things. Generally, but I increased the complication because you're kind of distracted. Rightfully so. Yes! Oh, I was hoping for Nice. <laughs> that was such a happy response. Yes! <laughs> oh, man. Well, I hope you're happy, guys. I think I just blew all our luck for the episode. Yeah. Well, that's two um, momentum gain. Um, you person, you. Um, and you hear uh, more just out of sheer the occasional checking of reports, seeing if the Kismet's going to leave anytime soon. It's again, no. And then, no again. 
Oh, maybe this time? No, not this time. <laughs> and then eventually you pick out, you start poking around in your uh, relaxation, as most captains do, especially ones as well trained as you are. Uh, you hear rumor that the diplomatic corps uh, is they are having talks with the uh, Cowcat Crystal people, and they seem to be there seems to be a stall in the proceedings. Um, mm, there seems wonder. to be a lot of back and forth between the Tenth Expeditionary and the Diplomatic Corps to figure out why that is, um, but nothing's been figured out yet. It's well, just can... it's all up in the air. It's almost like the Prime Diplomat died or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and also, since you got even that, uh, since there's an extra bit of good news if you give me a momentum. I will give you that momentum. Uh, with that momentum, you hear that Irene Adler is in the is uh, in the Cowcat sector, doing mm -hmm. something. You've heard the name. It's never her in particular. It's always a pseudonym, but you've kind of you've kind of been sort of keeping tabs on her um, for your own reasons. But it's just yes, that funny I feeling in the back of your head of hmm, and she's totally. there. But she keeps showing up, or a person that fits her description keeps showing up in various reports. Yes, just purely, purely professional, purely, my, my mm -hmm. purely professional curiosity. Yes, quite. <coughs> oh, shit. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> um, uh, you also know that there are four uh, ships in the, uh, in the nearby regions. In that region that seemed to be part of uh, in that sector, the SS Martin's Reach, a Federation vessel, the SS Prim, a Cardassian vessel, the Krilo, Ferengi, and the SS Sakona, a Vulcan science vessel. Uh, in in that uh, in the Calcut sector. Sector, not near the star system because it's under quarantine, but they're in right. the sector that it's uh, around uh, it. Could could we get that list? Sure, I'll could type that just... out in the chat for you. Yeah, sorry, it's just. Uh... That's a lot of places at once. Yeah, it's, it's a few. Di that's a few different ships, and I just want to keep them all straight. And with the SS designation, none of them are warships. They're all civvy ships, mm, so right. freighters, traders, that's free traders, that sort of thing. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I mean, well, <laughs> with with Ferengi, it's one and the same. Yeah, unless they're pirates, then. And even then. <gasps> We're not officially robbing people. Oh, right. it's just rules of acquisition. Nope. It's just good business. That should be SS Sakona, but you know what I mean. But Kirilo doesn't have SS because they don't do that. Well, one thing I do find kind of odd about that, Cardassians, all the way out here in the Beta Quadrant? Yeah, they're way out of the way. They have to cross t uh, the entirety of the Federation to get here. Yeah. Either that, or they somehow managed to swing a cut through Romulan space, but I doubt that. Well, yeah, with, the sure. with the Dominion Treaty, it is possible. Uh, the Treaty of Bajor. I mean, it's possible, but it's still unlikely. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So that's what you discover, Grinnin. It's a noteworthy bit. Uh, who else is enjoy? Who else has anything particular they wanted to do on in their? Sure, leave. Um, the stupid response would be hookers and blow on the station. Oh, no. I mean, in the lower yes. decks, maybe? Am, am I on the starbase already? But no. The counselor? Is the counselor already on the What's starbase? What's your actual answer? Serious answer, I suppose. A serious answer would be dealing with my subordinates. That would be Wittergast and Vox because they've both been working with engineering and science to help with the propulsion system and astro navigation um, I'm going to have you give me oh, I'll actually give you insight con for this one difficulty 2 uh, I'm going to check the focus supplies here without really tipping my hand too much do, 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 do. That's so funny, though. <laughs> I'm going to go with Astro Navigation as a focus.
Oh. Gotta love the internet uh, being annoying. Yep. Oh, there we go. Now I can hear you. <laughs> oh. Yeah, sorry, what difficulty was that? Uh, two. Okay, you got yourself one momentum out of that. <clears throat> and... One of the things that you're getting as you're working with your uh, subordinates and getting a feel for the ship, and actually Lunar Class is a fairly good ship for that sort of thing, as I recall. I'm going to make sure I'm not lying to you. I'm pretty sure its con department's pretty decent. Yeah, I think our con is pretty good. That's eh, two. It's not terrible, but... Oh, then it's... Yeah, it's the, uh, it's the officer who makes up for the ship. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Oh, and well, it's also our engines are also decent. Yeah. Uh, the majority of your staff is the the majority of your staff is in the security and science departments aboard the uh, aboard the ship. Oh my god, Penn. <laughs> yep. What? Yeah, you do discover there, Penn, that um, as you guys are looking over the engines and getting a feel for them, tuning them up, working with the Sarbase crew, who are since you guys are here, they every so often they'll come by, offer some help because why not? Um, and there's this odd thing you're hearing you hear among the uh, other crew from the uh Naranja station that apparently there are ships in the area that are suffering uh whose warp fields uh, get very inefficient suddenly um there's like a sudden speed drop off they lose like a whole 0.5 to a full point of warp and then it in the span of like maybe five seconds at warp travel it goes away ships have been trying to figure out what's causing that but no one's really sure yet, and no ship has really been sent to investigate that. Especially when there's rumors that the fleet might be moving. Um, there's not, they're not too sure if this fleet's going to be looking into it, or the next fleet uh, a cycling in is going to deal with it. Would I be able to glean from these rumors whereabouts this location, or general location of the warp drop would be? Uh, you can attempt a... Uh, reason con or reason science th at a difficulty of four to try to look up the reports and try to cross where all these reports are coming from because you're just hearing this like third hand from like uh, engineered uh, enlistees. Okay, could I get away with using astral navigation again? You totally could. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I want to give you one threat, please. Yeah, one threat. Yeah. It that's... begins. That sounds like penned. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's no point. <laughs> well, well, no, no, no. You can re-roll. You can re-roll. Yes, I got. <laughs> yeah, but it's difficulty four. <laughs> Spend oh. determination now. Um. Yeah. Oh my God! Three eighteens. You rolled three eighteens. Yep. Wow. Um, yeah, the most you're able to get from that is it's very vague. You know it's somewhere in the 10th Expeditionary's patrol area, but that's a wide swath of space. Um, it doesn't narrow it down for you at all. Um, the, and some of the reports are too vague. They're not very worded properly. Because they didn't. Because the ships that ran into it made a note of it, really. They didn't really bother. There's like cursory examples, and then it's like, oh, we have to rush off and deal with the Romulan situation, or oh, we have to rush off and deal with this other situation. So no one's really sat still for a second to look in that general area of space. Yeah, they were in the middle of stuff. Okay, that, that's fine. I can get Vux to make notes on our astral navigation charts herself, and I can just one engineering that it's possible we may get a drop at some stage, but not to freak out. Yeah, because the war bubble goes right back the way it was. It'll drop and then it comes back again, so... That's why no one's really being red alert about it. Yeah, because it hasn't caused any serious rubble. But yeah, that, that's um, that's it for me for now. Whom else has something they plan on? Actually, I'm looking at Ifrix in particular, if you're doing anything. Um... She'd probably spend quite a bit of time in her quarters uh, messaging back and forth, uh, spending some time with her kids. Her what? Her children. 
Uh, you cut out for a moment. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> My internet is being super, super weird. Sorry, guys. It's okay. It's all good. We'll hold it against you later. You guys um... sound mostly like robots. Oh, no. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, you don't, so. No comment. Yeah, I'm a, I, I know things. Um, but yeah, so she's been, she's been quite a bit of time talking with her kids, um, getting caught up with them and their lives and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm going to ask you for insight medicine, uh, okay. complication two, cause you, you're kind of distracted. Um, uh, but, and I'm going to off your focuses. I'm going to say, well, you have two different focuses that apply here. Infectious diseases or xenoimmunology. Okay. So either one. Th those are the ones that are per uh, perking up, just to give you a hint on what you're rolling about. Uh, difficulty two. Difficulty two. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> What'd you roll? <laughs> I mean, I didn't... There's no complications, but I don't notice shit. Oof. Yeah, you read over the medical reports of your uh, fellow officers in the 10th Expeditionary, and, you know, there's the odd, I helped with a sprain, there was this interesting cold someone had, but nothing that really draws your attention too much. Uh, although, something that she probably would be noting at about this time, I think, uh, I think this is about the time that the Hadfield is currently dealing with a blight. Well, I don't notice it. Yeah. Not with that roll. <laughs> with that roll, it's one of those, eh, it hasn't gotten around. That report, that's the thing she's going to read next when she's done with whatever else she's doing. Yeah. The uh, doctor, is it Blackwell on that ship? Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Blackwell's got it covered. He's great. You, you haven't even met him. <laughs> uh, we met the Hadfield. Oh, you, you met the doctor on the Hadfield? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Yes, for the actual crossover. I'm sorry, I was mm -hmm. thinking about... No, it's because I was thinking about the medical episode I ran. Yeah, and then all of the doctors decided that we were going to have, like, a group chat to complain about our captains and their dumb choices. <laughs> <laughs> Bless. Anyways, back to the episode. Yep. Um, anything else you do, Efrix? Um, when she's not talking with her kids she'd probably go on base and and touch in with the with the docs there um spend a little time in research on um if you burn two momentum uh we don't you can find no, we oh, don't have we, mm -mm. we have two momentum don't we oh, do we? Oh, no. no yeah we, don't. we have nope. one we have one because I spent it to get more information on my end. Oh yeah. When I did when I did my thing. And then Penn got one during his roll, didn't he? Oh no, no he didn't. No. He didn't make his roll no. right. He didn't even succeed. Okay, there's. I have two momentum pools here, so I was thrown. Well, technically, I made two rolls and I got one on the first roll, but failed the second. Oh, then right. we do have two. Then we yep. do have two. I don't know if you guys want me to spend it for this though. Uh. Feel free. Okay. Sure. Got to I'm, I'm spin I'm, momentum I'm, to make momentum. I'll, I'll take Well, if, if I'm not rolling, I'm not really making momentum, so. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it in a moment. I'm just taking, I'm doing something. Sure. But I am listening. Uh, what you, uh, when you go on base, uh, you're actually pulled in uh, to examine someone who has a very unusual... You have to consult with someone who has an odd disease, and since you're a doctor that's nearby, and there's like five other people in the room with medical uh, expertise. And when you walk in, you see very familiar red protrusions coming out of the person's face. Mm. <laughs> Nobody touch anyone's shoulders. <laughs> oh no. Huh? Why, doctor? Just in general, uh, if that's what I think it is. It looks highly, awfully familiar. They're highly volatile. Oh. Let's. Have you. What have you done with it so far? 
Uh, we've been scanning it for the most part. Uh, we've kept him on the bio bed and kept the pressor field on. Uh, for some reason, he's not waking up, but his condition isn't getting any worse. He just seems to be in a sort of stasis. But we've been trying to figure out what that points at the protrusion, what that is. It almost looks like a crystalline uh, growth uh, coming out of mm -hmm. his bone structure. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> does the person look familiar? Uh, it seems to be some uh, Bolian, uh, civil, civilian clothes. Okay. Um, how? That was pretty classified, wasn't it? That mission. Yeah, it was. It was kept within the expeditionary uh, expeditionary, the exploratory division. Okay. Yes, I've I've dealt with these crystalline entities before. Do you have any suggestions, Doctor? Are any of you telepathic, perchance? Oh. Uh, no, we don't have any in the staff right now. Right. N well, be polite. Explain everything that you're doing. And don't use anything that has excessive heat or sparks or would interact poorly with something that was explosive. Say anything that would interact poorly with dilithium, don't use that. And the doctors all kind of freeze for a second and look at each other. And then they look to you and one of them says, you're saying that's explosive. Yes. I, okay. They're um, not. They're not explosive. It. They are. They're. They can be highly volatile. It's sentient. Okay. Um. I think we're gonna need security down here, unless you. Uh. We we don't know how to take it out of them, and we're. Will it get any worse? It's possible. Do you think we can get it out of them? Or should we just right. leave it in? That's a conversation. You can be respect. Mm. <laughs> you lost your telepath. <laughs> it depends on it depends on how integrated it is. You said it's attached to at the bone. It's growing out of the bone structure along the. Oh. It's almost like it's mutating it into the crystalline structure. We're worried that it's going to spread into the rest of the bone and uh, cr and crystallize his entire structure. Once that happens, his uh, body is completely compromised, and we're not sure we can reverse it. We've never seen anything like this. Before. Well, we've seen something I... like this before, but not quite this speed. I'm not sure that... Uh that we can reverse it now, not without killing one or both of them. So, you suggest we put him in stasis then, and hope it, that I, freezes the process? I suggest that we... I thought he was... Ar is he not already in stasis? Sorry, I misunderstood. He's comatose in, in a presser field. He's comatose. Okay. He's in the pressure field. And that just uh, keeps from infections from uh, getting into him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, give me a second. Sure. And she's going to walk forward. <laughs> God damn. Uh, well, you know, doctor, you could try to, you could try to surgery it out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but remember how uh, surgery involves daring? Yeah. Do you remember how my daring <laughs> sucks? You should really do something about that at some point. I do yeah, have... it's... Well, I've got good news for you, because since we did this the last time, a bunch of new stuff for doctors has come out. Namely, how to make surgeries less dangerous. Yeah, cool. right now you're sitting at... Uh, the difficulty has been is being reduced by two. One, because there's a medical team there, and two, you're in a medical facility. So this has become much easier. And it'll be, it'd be control... 
because you're not doing it while the guy's standing. He's actually laid out, and you yep. actually have tools, like full-on surgery tools at hand. Yep, if you have the presser field, you can re-roll 1d20. Yep. Cool. Uh, I'm going to start with talking to it, because it did it did seem to understand me before. I just couldn't hear it. G uh, give me presence. Um, what are you trying to say to it, I guess is a better way to put it. What are you trying to learn? Uh, it's a long way from home. How did it get where it is? I'm going to say presence command. Uh, difficulty. Mm, I have two. a thing about that. Suppose you have a talent. I can no oh, longer look at all your it's... character sheets, so I can't tell. Not. I don't think it applies to this, unfortunately. I got excited. I'll take a quick look. Uh, it's uh, doctor's orders when you attempt a task coordinated with others, which I'm not doing. Oh, um, or to coerce someone into taking a taking or refraining from a specific course of action. I would say I would say we would apply here. Okay. So I think you get to use your medicine instead yes, of command. Instead, yep. of, instead of command, which my oh. presence is not great. It's not as bad as daring. <laughs> yeah uh, what's the difficulty uh, difficulty is two and I'm going to spend one threat and up the complication to two as well Okay. Uh, and we now have no momentum for me to use cautious so that's fine uh, do my focuses count which one Maybe counseling? Um, yeah, I can give that to you. I was like, otherwise, probably not. <laughs> not with talking. <laughs> Roll them bones. <laughs> oh, God. I You've just killed someone. You, you have just pulled an Evans. Yep. Well, oh, it is in the shoulder. That's it a is a shoulder. worthy thing there right there. Determination. If you're going to fall on your face, fall on your face with style. Own it, man. Oh, <laughs> boy. Yeah, I mean, you get one free reroll from the med bay, right? That's Something like that? No, that's for No, because it wasn't a medical. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. Right. No. This is oh. just a counseling was... kind of roll, right? Yeah. Ooh, so what's going to happen? <laughs> Are you gonna spend determination? That's the question. I mean, I don't know if I have. Own it. Do Own I... it. You don't understand. If he blows <laughs> up, all of us blow up. Well, no, you, 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 it's a psychology role, right? So she kind of did a counseling role to try to understand what's going on with it. Yeah, so no, but we've worked it. with this before. You don't, right, understand. you don't understand. <laughs> you don't understand. This will blow up. The crystal it tries to kill up itself. Everybody in this medical facility. So are you? Like, gonna, do you have I, a determination to use or not? Uh, only if do all the good you can qualifies. Because mm. I don't think anything else does. Walk me down the path on that one a bit. So, the determination is do all the good good you can, or the value, uh, by all the means you can, as long as ever you can. So, I guess it would reveal that her intention, or like, she's very good intentioned, and she's that's not pretty obvious. Yeah, she's yeah. To be I'll give you she's that. She's soft spoken. Role. She's not like hovering over it, like, what are you doing here? I'll give you that, yeah. Reroll. Where is she? <laughs> <laughs> Watch it be another two. Why did you say Martha? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. hey. hey much better. Jesus. That Not was two twenties. That was stressful. Uh, you uh, get one momentum. Jesus. 
Uh, so no one's allowed to die because I can't help you the rest of the session. Sure, you can't just lose values. Oh, um, but no, uh, you talk to it and for a brief moment, it looks like it's starting to brighten and heat up and rather than back away, cause you know that if you let it, if you let it get more upset, it's going to take out the mid bay. So you just keep talking to it very calmly, trying to not get alarmed or anything. And then eventually it feels like you're talking to a plank. You don't really, you get that sort of feeling where it's a faint feeling, um, like of a sense of fear, a sense of um, being in a great void. Uh, if it understands you, um, it's probably, imagine someone who's been in a sensory deprivation tank for way mm -hmm. too long and now you're talking to them. Except they have yeah. the ability to explode when they get too upset. So oh. yeah, it's very it, overwhelming. Yeah. Can I interject here? Um, and I don't mean to insert myself, but I know that my counselor is an empath, and so I'm not sure whether a crystalline entity would be something that would hum to me as I was wandering oh, the starbase. Oh no, we. Oh. Would it be something that that she would pick up because it is such a special being, other different than other beings? I don't mean to insert myself into you, a scene or anything. Me. I'm just saying, I'm wondering if. Uh, you're good. It's a good. That. It's a good point. Give me insight plus medicine. Right. Sorry. No, no. Uh, I I no. completely forgotten. And You're good. Uh, I have uh, psychology. Um, I have a specialty in empath sensing, like contacting and sensing. Uh, empath sensing is going to catch this. Yep. Okay, so I'll use that as a focus, and we don't have any momentum, right? We do have one. We uh, have one. I'll. Can I spend it? Sure. Okay, then I will. I'll spend it. Insight, medicine, roll that. Hey. Do we get it back, or was that just enough? Now I have studious also. Um, which which for extra, you extra bit of information? Yeah. Right, right. Just well, to let I'm, you. Know. Yeah. Well, um, question: Do we get that momentum back or not? You do. Yes. Thank you. Um, as you're walking around the station, counselor. Um, you get this wave of of terror as you're you're just sitting at the you're just sitting at a bar kind of looking over notes and all of a sudden whoa, whoa and you kind of you can actually feel where it is on the station it's that loud to you okay i'll get determined and then i'll i'll kind of go to try to follow it or find where it is and make my way to wherever it is sorry to interject myself i just figured it might be Ooh. something she might yep cuz no, i figure crystalline good. entity right is a is a big making your way downtown yeah, right. So I'll make my way way that way, and I'll do it kind of hastily. I'm not going to run or anything, but I'll do it hastily. Quick question. Uh, what is your question off of Studious? Because it happens immediately if you're going to use it. So I get a good feeling of, of kind of terror and, and, and fear. Mm -hmm. um, is is yeah. this creature or entity or whoever's feeling this, um, does this seem life threatening to them? They feel life threatened? Yes. Okay, then I will I will medical emergency myself down there. Um I will I'll run down there or I don't know, can you get your com badge and ask to be beamed to wherever On a station? Uh, yeah, yeah I totally could, could. could I sense where it where it is in proximity, like if I looked at a map or something? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's that strong. Okay, then then I would probably look at a map and see that maybe that's near medical and I'd actually ask somebody to beam me over there. Uh, give me presence medicine difficulty one because you're, you're asking the transporter guy to help you out and he's like, huh? Give me a second. Sure. He's like, no, no, I don't have a second right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, so if I have off. persuasion as a focus, will that help me persuade him to it do would. it now? Okay. It would. And we'll do that. And you know what? I'll, if I can spend a momentum again, I will. Uh, you probably don't need it. It's only difficulty one. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I could gain back momentum, right? <laughs> <laughs> you guys want momentum this game, don't you? I don't think, I don't think that's how that works. I mean, I know, okay. sometimes it does. Okay. Sometimes I'm, it does. But I'm just saying, you know, when when she asks to be transport, she makes it look good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry. Here, I'll roll. Hey. Got one and... momentum. Okay. Um, suddenly behind you as you're talking to the crystal Apex and the rest of the medbay kind of backed away 
as it, as it was heating up, because you kind of told them this thing was going to blow up, somebody beams into the room. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, I don't... I don't acknowledge whoever it is, and I continue like just talking as as calmly and uh, as consistent, like in my tone and mannerisms as I can, using all that uh, bedside manner training. You're okay. It's fine. We're here. Don't worry. You're not in danger. You know. Yep. All of can, that good stuff. Can I? As soon as I beam there, can I try to connect with that, whatever this? being is and try to make it feel better like try to push out calm feelings to try to calm it like i'm here now i'm gonna help you uh presence medicine sure. um you can be assisted by efrix on this because she's already trying she's already verbally trying to calm it down cool sweet does that lower my complication range or what no uh she assists she gets to roll a die herself and take is, the momentum is the complication range still two um no it's brought down to one now uh, okay. And the uh, difficulty is going to be. I'm going to set it at two, actually. Two difficulty? Yeah. So um, you okay. take a momentum, and Efrix gets to assist. Can I take three momentum? Uh, we don't have three momentum. You can give me threat. Don't give him threat. <laughs> I mean, why I, not? I will what play my character how I play up. my character. No, I'll take the one momentum. That's fine. I got, I got things like studious Besides, and cautious it's, it's, medicine. It's, its own oh you have cautious medicine well yeah i'm gonna be i'm gonna be very cautious when i do this but i'm gonna be as, as sensitive as possible and i want to use my psychology and my my uh persuasion right my empathic connecting right and my presence and my medicine to do this so i'll take the one take the three dice yes for focus i will roll it there you go yeah bam Yay. three oh. momentum oh by the by uh Joan, I sent you a thing that would be a better kismet to use for this particular map. Really? Yes. You'll huh. see. See what I mean? Oh, I thought the one we had was the... Oh, that's sideways. I see what you're saying. I see. I'm yeah, I see spaced. I mean. Yeah. Nope. Yeah, see what I mean when I say that it'll look better? Uh, I'll add that in later. Just okay. I wanna... Yeah, nope, totally fine. Uh, so that's three momentum. Uh, yes. Awesome. Um, you get a sense. It starts to calm down, and you feel a sentience there, counselor. There <laughs> is a presence in there, but it's it's. Imagine taking a single facet of a of a persona and then isolating it. So it's it's not a whole sentience. It's part of a greater sentience. Okay, so. Throwing studious at that, would I say that the sentience is a young sentience, like a childlike thing, or something that's adolescent, or something that's old? I would say it'd be an adolescent or so. Okay, so I want to be, I want to, from this point on, I'm just saying, you know, I want to kind of push my feelings more towards a mother figure. Being uh, more of a mother, motherly figure, like a maternal figure towards it a little bit. That's Efrix's thing. <laughs> <laughs> and Efrix, you and imagine Efrix, the what you're almost feeling is that this there you're getting sort of a the feeling the counselor's getting, you're getting like a distant echo of it. Mm -hmm. It's very, very faint because you're not you're not naturally empathic, but it is enough. No, that I'm it's, not. Yeah. But it's that even you are feeling this chill up your neck of, ooh, okay. I know what that is. Um and that's unusual because even the crystals on the surface, you didn't get that. You were kind of, it was very neutral while you were there. Yeah. Until like it had to be pointed out to you, these things were or psionically reaching out, but you're feeling this yeah. thing. Well, well, yeah. little. <laughs> Beyond the the, it blows up when it's angry and it likes being <laughs> asked, please to do something. Hello, everyone. She looks around. She says, "Sorry to interrupt." And she looks to the captain. She says, "Commander, well, uh, the if uh, you would the report." A doctor. Oh, she, says, a doctor. she says, Commander. Oh. Commander, oh, if, uh, if you would report, she says. It's Lieutenant Commander, but. Uh, oh, yeah, but you call Lieutenant Commanders Commanders, too. Take the promotion, take the promotion. <laughs> I'm giving you respect. I'm giving you respect. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, uh, hello. Hi. 
she kind of eases her way walking over. She says, I'm Commander Dye. She says, Counselor Dye, actually. Dr. Evers? Pleasure to meet you. She puts her hand out to shake her hand as she looks over towards the patient, which is probably the focus in the room. Yeah. Uh, Efrix's movements are very slow and smooth and uh, very indicative of what she's like. She's she's telegraphing everything she's doing before she does it. Um. She smiles and she says, I'm trying to keep a positive attitude. It seems that this is a volatile moment. She says, mm. and... I felt that cry out across Starbase, so I came as quick as I could as I found something in need. Uh, do you require any assistance, Doctor? You're empathic? I am empathic. I'm Betazoid. This is a delicate situation. A few weeks back, my sh the Kismet encountered a crystalline ent entity. They were sentient, and Starfleet was not aware of that. They made some judgment calls based on the fact that they weren't aware, and it put everybody within that station in danger. Uh, we encountered it not knowing the full situation, they can be volatile when they're frightened or pushed or upset. Uh, they're explosive. Right, 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 right. Um, but So is everyone in this room required to be here? She looks around at the various doctors and assistants. The CMO, the chief medical is like, no, no. Uh, we were prepping for surgery, and then we weren't sure what to do with the crystal. Might I recommend, Doctor, that we clear the room and secure the area? I don't know what you've done. She says, I don't want to step on your, your feet. She says, I just wish to assist you. Oh, great. Uh, if we're not doing surgery, then the uh, rest of you get back to your regular stations. Uh, nurse, could you get a uh, security team down here and secure this surgery bay until further notice? Thank you. And then the room starts clearing out, except for you two and the CMO. Doctor, you say volatile. Um, how volatile is this entity? They're not purposely hostile, but when they get upset, or if they come into contact with things that are... They're energy-based. Their composition is very similar to that of dilithium. So they can explode or, or make some sort of reaction. Yeah, and it's it can be bad. It, it can, can be, be big, big, she says? Yes. Perhaps we could get security to put in a sort of force field just around the med bay, just in case something happens. I don't... When the... when Based on what we saw when we arrived after um, Evan's, Evan's encounter, how big was the blast radius? Uh, about a meter radius across. And that was a lot larger crystal. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's about two meters wide. Yeah. <clears throat> Perhaps we could speak with an engineer or someone um, in security that could arrange for a force shield around this particular med bay that could. I mean, you can maybe... put up medical force fields. Yeah. Right, but they might not be configured for, you know, like, explosives. I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. The CMO, the chief medical in the room says, I concur. I can. We have a fairly strong uh, force fields here. We've had to deal with a lot of things from your from the 10th Expeditionary. Um, but, yeah, we can get one around this room or even just around the yeah. bio bed itself if we need the rest of the room. Doctor, is and there actually... an engineer that you trust and that knows these particular entities? <laughs> Uh, well... Not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. Uh, let me... Oh, gosh. Even the captain wasn't there. Uh, doctors... Our security... Our... <laughs> uh, doctors, I, I might have a suggestion. Uh, there was someone, um... Uh, I'm trying to remember. Hold on. And they go grab a pad, start tapping at something. 
Sorry, I was just working to include another player. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know if there was an engineer. Yeah, our engineer is not here anymore, and then our our security chief that was also involved in it is can't make it tonight. <laughs> so there's a and, and the and our first officer is dead. So I'm the only person <laughs> from the Kismet that was like there. I'll the say doctors. It, I, guys, I don't think this is going to be that difficult of a task. I think right, you right, right. need to just bite the bullet and do it. It's cool. We got it. The guy, the guy says what? Uh, doctors. Um, it appears that I knew that someone else was working on uh, some sort of crystal uh, disease. I, it didn't strike me until you two were speaking. Uh, there's a Daystrom fellow here aboard. Um, one of those uh, androids uh that have been that just entered into the fleet. Um, I could probably call them up here if they're aboard. I don't know if they're here yet, but I can try to see. They apparently they're they've been uh, authorized to study something called the Cowket Crystal Formation. If this is the same thing, that would be it. Oh, well, there we go. She looks to the doctor and kind of you know gives her this reassuring look that you know she's in charge. <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> She taps her comm badge. Uh, this is the chief medical officer of the station. Uh, would Lieutenant Myth please report to Medbay, please? Medbay uh, 5, please. Understood. All. I'm on my way. May I inquire, Doctor, what this is doing to the patient? Um, it seems to be growing into... It seems to be mutating the uh, bone structure of the collarbone on the left side there, and it's slowly crystallizing the rest of it. Is it because it's hungry or it's trying to grow? I, we, we don't know. We didn't even know what this was until uh, we called in for consultation. Do we know my, why, why it's doing it, its motivations? My hypothesis is that it's been disconnected from the rest of its kind. They are telepathic. It's trying to expand to fill the void. Right, right, right. So maybe we could give it something else, um, something more alluring. She says that it could attach itself to, and maybe it'll naturally move towards that and away from the patient. The problem is figuring out what that would be. Well, what it, it has to be. It has to be something similar to the bone because it's grafting itself to the bone of this particular person. Not necessarily. They were growing out of just about everything on the planet. She nods her head. They grew into the patients before that we experienced. I'm curious how it wound up integrated with this person. Would a medical scan, she says, tell us more, perhaps? I, I don't know what you've done. She says, they said they scanned it already, didn't they? Uh, they scanned it and, weren't, and they didn't know what they were looking at. Yeah. Um... It would be best to ask permission. And... About now, a, a lieutenant enters into the med bay. If those doors are to be believed. Yep. <laughs> Sweet. Whatever we do, we need to be sure to communicate as best we can that what we're doing is not hostile, that we're trying to help it. Doctors, counselor, you asked for, you asked for my assistance. I look at the the android or the person. What do they look like? Um, well, if you can see my thing on roll twenty, that's what they look like. <laughs> oh, probably, a, probably a little paler. Um, actually, no. She does not have the complexion of the Sung type android, as you might be familiar with from before. Un under myth, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. She actually looks fairly human aside from the eyes, which are the um, telltale yellow. She looks at the lieutenant. She says, Lieutenant, we're trying to figure out what this entity wants, what it, uh, why it's connected itself to this host, and if there's a way that we can get it to connect to something else, perhaps, isolate it, put it in a more safe environment for itself. This entity is... Ah, yes, the crystalline formations on the patient. She These says... seem to be in line with Calcut formations on Calcut... The lieutenant commander, she says, knows more about this subject than I. I'm just assisting her. She looks over towards the lieutenant commander. Sorry, you cut off at the end for me. 
Um, she says the lieutenant commander uh, is... No, 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 no. Not, sorry, not you, Pandora. Or me. Right. This entity seems to be of Calcut Crystalline nature. Mm -hmm. That's all I had to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let's see what we can do. Counselor, you appear to be beta's have you been able to make contact with the entity? I am, and I'm still connected with the uh, the entity, still or no? You are. It's you're getting a sense of it's waiting. It's not. It 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 knows it's safe, so it's just kind of trying to relax in the in the bubble of comfort you've given it. Okay, and I want to continue to kind of give that exude that confidence of comfortability. Okay. I'm not trying to put that in my inflections as far as my character's voice, but uh, she says yes. She's, she says, I am connected with the entity. Well, then I believe the most prudent course of action will be to introduce another location that the crystals can grow into. As I believe you were hinting at when I arrived. Uh, you notice that as you are talking, the crystal changes from a red color to a uh, blue. Oh, there you go. I look at it and I will convey the feelings of, oh, you look so pretty. <laughs> How pretty you look. You look pretty. It be, it's, it's giving a sense of serenity now. Okay. Um, GM. It's quite <laughs> calm now, she says. Quick question, GM, because I know mm -hmm. originally, and, and I can't remember, um, at one point you said there were blue and red crystals and they were different. They healed, remember? The blue crystals healed. Yes, but I remember at one point uh, they said that the blue crystals were not the same as the red, like not even the same species of crystal. Is that correct? Yeah, they're they're like, um, they're both of, you know how Romans and humans are both humanoid, but they're still different species mm -hmm. in that way? These things are similar in that way. They're of the same crystalline main species. Makeup, but yeah. But this thing has seemed to have just rapidly shifted into blue, which, from your from the brief study you guys had while you were there, that's yeah. not a thing they do. Yeah, that's why I was like, I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> well, that's a different oh. behavior than I've seen before. She says, "What's that, uh, Lieutenant Commander?" Uh, previ previously, when we had interactions with them, the the uh. Blue crystals were a different, I hate to say species, but almost, almost a different category of crystal entirely. The red and the blue were not the same thing. They couldn't become one another. She takes a medical tricorder and she hands it over to the, or to the uh, lieutenant commander. Perhaps we should see if there's any difference. You said they're feeling quite calm? She says they are. She says, uh, scans have not been intrusive, right? She looks back to the, the other doctor no, that this no. is his med bay. That was something this uh, alien to us. Uh, invasive scans can cause other pr uh, complications. She says, so mm -hmm. they, they have been intrusive. Well, no. is there a telepath, she says, near that can speak to this? Have telepaths been able to speak? To this being? Uh, yes, yeah, so that's a question I already asked. Apparently there's not one on staff. I didn't even know you were here, Counselor. She looks so, uh, I'm early. She smiles. Oh. I have an assignment. She says that I'm early and I'm passing through a couple days. She says, uh, I guess we'll have to make do with me. I'm sorry that I can't fulfill the needs of a telepath for you, Doctor. She says, but I'll do my best. Try to ease and try to tell the entity that we need to do, convey that we need to help it by doing some scans, perhaps. I'm gonna have to focus on that. It's okay. hard, it's not, it's not like speaking to someone telepathically, it's conveying feelings, complex feelings. Mm -hmm. I understand. Can I, can I do that even? <laughs> Am I able to, to, to try to like, 
relay what I, I mean, my we intentions already through Empathic? have it pretty calm and trusting of us. So as long as we keep up that constant. In, in essence, you can roll to assist if anyone tries to do something to it to keep it from, fre uh, okay. from freaking out. Yeah. That's, that's all I'm asking. So cool. Um, so keeping up my, my stream of, uh, of like, gentle speech towards it um i'd like to say again you cut out really i'd like to scan it <laughs> uh that would be reason medicine difficulty of okay. two do i assist her or does she just get the right quarter bonus uh you assist as long as she gets at least one hit okay um and i'd like to use if that's cool with everybody Go ahead. Uh, complication one or complication two? Uh, complication two. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> uh, does. Oh, uh, what are you doing? Are you trying to do the surgery now? No, I'm scanning it. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, because it, it changed color and I want to know why. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think I have a focus that does genetics count. I'll take it at increased complication. Um, no, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. Uh, I don't think anything. Uh, it's you got not, this, man. It's not biological, so I can't use any of that. Okay, let's try it. Hey. Sweet. And <laughs> medical reason. There you go. Two momentum. Yay. Uh, scanning it. Uh, what in particular are you looking for? I'm trying to see um, if this crystal's makeup is different than the ones that we got. Um, it Very just... minimal readings on. Because they always exploded when we tried to scan them before. <laughs> uh, you notice the blue the blue crystal does seem to radi uh, seems to luminesce a little as you're scanning it, um, but you're not feeling heat um, that mm -hmm. much from it. And the and the tricoder lets you know that it just seems to be it just seems to be uh, echoing the the very minimal sensor uh, pings that the uh, hand the wand gives off. Mm -hmm. So it's just responding to the fact that any energy is touching it. Um, okay. And when you're scanning it, it does seem to have some sort of latinum infusion in the crystal. Okay. It's a very it, it uh, almost to the uh, degree that you would put inside a, a slip, shall we say, of latinum. Hmm. And it seems to be contained in the crystal, or not so much contained in the traditional sense. Like if you cracked it in two, it's in, it has a juicy center. It's more like it's kind of infused across the crystal. Yeah, within its within its makeup. But it does seem as it's in the parts it's growing into, there are tiny, tiny bits of latinum. Like it's okay. actually creating more of it. Oh god, that's almost worse than being dilithium. <laughs> yeah. Although Maybe from just... the scan, you do know that the, the it is no longer growing. <sighs> it seems to be trying okay. to repair what damage it's done to the body. Oh. They're so sweet. Is, has the uh, security arrived yet? Uh, yeah, they've arrived outside, and you, you actually hear the uh, noise of the force field being turned on. I will walk over to them and I will see what rank is the security that's there. Uh, petty officer. I will tell the petty officer um, I'll ask who's in charge of this installation. Uh, that would be Admiral Hepburn. She says please notify Admiral Hepburn that we have a medical emergency and that she needs to be uh, updated on that potentially volatile and dangerous situation. The CMO kind of speaks up a bit. Belay that. Sorry, uh, sorry, Commander. We don't, uh, until this gets further than this, uh, I don't feel comfortable bothering the Admiralty about this. She says this entity could explode. She says it could take several lives on this ship. Well, not the ship. She says this base station. She looks over the doctor and she says to the Lieutenant Commander, she says, how dangerous is this situation? 
I don't think it's as dangerous as it was. The blue crystals tend to emit healing energy as opposed to destructive. But let's assume sh that it becomes a red crystal. How dangerous that would this be? As small as it as small as it is, the the crystals that we dealt with before were significantly larger. Based off of my calculations, we'd be looking at a minimal blast size. It wouldn't endanger more than the patient, probably. Okay. She looks over to the uh, to the CMO and she says, she says, okay. She says, at least we all know now. Mm -hmm. I also believe, um, so based on this scan, uh, Lieutenant. Yes, Doctor. Do you have any idea what? this entity might find as a preferable host? Uh, yes, I'll see if I can have the computer synthesize some of the rock and mineral structures from Calcat to have the crystal grow into. Mm. I'm sure that would provide a more suitable substance than bone. Agreed. I think yeah. it was just trying to survive and panicking. Does anybody in the room look uh, concerned or panicky or any anybody that looked like they need any counseling at all or any of them that seem that they're stressed out? Oh, the CMO uh, seems fine. They, it, they seem very comforted that, that the three of you seem to be experts in, on this, so CMO is just okay. supervising more than anything. I'm just making sure there's no, like, Ensign in the corner, like, shaking in his bones, going, oh, and then all of a sudden we realize, you know? Yeah, no. <laughs> no, everybody else left. That he's uh, pulled out a phaser, and he's like, I gotta kill it before yeah, no. it blows us all up. Uh, that would blow us all up. <laughs> um, Everick seems significantly more relaxed. Like, she, she was exuding that calm before, but now she seems to actually, like, not be being, not putting on an act. She is actually... She will come over to her, and she will say, You are handling this very well. It's part of my job. All right. Um, so let's see if we can find this little crystal a better home. Understood. Um, you'll be looking at a uh, insight science or insight medicine. Difficulty of th three. All right. Um, Complication so too, because the cow are very are not very well understood. Um, can I uh, assist since I've been there? Mm -hmm, totally. Because we discussed this, can I use my research focus for this? Like this is the research I've currently been doing. Yes. Cool. And I will spend one moment. One moment. One, two, and three. And yeah, you get one momentum out of that. Uh, you find that if you give it, uh, if you, you can uh, move this thing into something that is uh, sturdy. Uh, bone is actually the least favorite of the crystal. It doesn't like attaching to bone pretty much. Uh, it likes things like duranium, titanium, steel, things like that. So if you move something close to it, eventually it will migrate over the course of a week over to the metal. All right. Well, Doctor, I will go acquire a suitable lattice structure for the crystal to grow. Thank and you, I Lieutenant. And I move to whatever nearest replicator there is program it. And we will scene change at that Ooh. point. Now that you've uh, stable, you've now found a way to keep that, get that thing out of that guy. Mm -hmm. uh, so lose more momentum. Yeah. As we jump I into... Think, I think we were at five and then he used one and then we gained it back. Yeah. We're oh, okay, so you're at three uh, stable. But yeah, uh, so you'll lose one just because of the scene change. Yeah. Right, but we were at five. We lost one due to the scene change. We're now at four. Four. Okay. So I actually, I actually had to draw one. Mm -hmm. um, so we jump into uh, what is what is largely a imagine a rather large stateroom. Um, 
um, with various flags of the Federation in there, some nice paintings, and a lot of people in dress uniform milling around, chatting with wine glasses in hand. And a Captain Grennan who has been brought in. Mm-hmm. And eventually an admiral, a rear admiral. Uh, that's the one with two gold pips in a box, if I recall. Um, might be just one. But anyway, uh, he walks over to you. So, Captain, enjoying yourself, are we? Uh, well enough. Uh, so uh, the reason I came, I actually invited you. Uh, I did want to introduce you to. Well, I was intending to introduce you to your newest uh, science officer. You know that uh, Kawaket system I sent you out about. Yes, quite vividly. Well, I've been given leave by Hepburn to assign your ship to help me with a certain situation. Uh, it seems someone is stealing crystals. Uh, from the planet and breaking the quarantine. Problem is, I don't know how they're doing it. And I don't. And none of my ships are nearby enough to help. So, since your ship is the only one that has qualified people that could actually look into this, you're up. Assuming you think you're up, your crew's up for it. Of course. So, you need to know how they're breaking the quarantine. I have an idea where my, there's a free port that might, you might get you started that's nearby. Um, but beyond that, I'll leave the investigation up to you and your crew. Oh, um, I will be assigning a lieutenant. Uh, are you familiar with the new Sung type android recently? Oh, I've heard that Starfleet's been continuing development to try to reproduce the Sung type android, but I wasn't aware that any breakthroughs had been made. Well,. I'm not at liberty to go into too much detail about it, but there are some out there uh, for various reasons. But this one, thankfully for us, is a Daystrom Fellow. A Daystrom a, Fellow. A Lieutenant Myth. Even looks like a human, aside from the eyes, anyway. Hmm. Fascinating. She was going to meet us here, but she got called away on some sort of medical uh, emergency. Oh, that's odd. Hmm. But I will be assigning her to your ship as a as your new science officer. Never mind her actual specialty, because her fellowship it was largely involved at the tail end was largely involved with the uh, well not the fellowship but what her recent research has been into the Cowcat crystals themselves, and she is the foremost authority on it outside of your ship, frankly, because I've been very careful who I tell about this. I understand why. Hmm. Uh, I'll also be assigning. Uh, a lieutenant junior from my fleet, uh, transferring them over to you. A let me let me remember what was his name again. Oh, it was a hijack something. No, that's not right. Uh, lieutenant junior grade Aran. Uh, he's going to be hopefully your new chief engineer once he gets uh, a bit more experience under him. But uh, he was really good on the ship I had him on before, so I think he'll do well on your ship as well. That's... I'll be putting uh, lieutenant. Vata, I believe, onto your ship to help uh, mentor Hello. him a bit. Vata, it'll be great to have her back. I take it that the project she was working on here at Narendra Station is finished up then. I could not comment on that. He sits at this line. I really dislike this part of this, uh, the Federation. So many secrets. <laughs> <sighs> you and me both. You and me both. I've even heard a rumor there's another fleet gallivanting somewhere off in the Expanse doing God knows what. But I'm not authorized to know about that, because it's not my fleet. <laughs> uh. yes, I'll be sending your ship out in two days' time, so get your ship ready. And uh, if you need any further files, uh, just remember that this uh, mission is limited to your ship for the time being. Uh your investigation will be released to the rest of the expeditionary if required, but I'd rather this didn't get around. Of course. And don't worry about anyone here. They're all people I know, so. <laughs> well, we wouldn't all be wearing these, you know, and he tugs at the, you know, because he's wearing the sort of flowy, you know, dress uniforms that you wear at these events. That we wouldn't be wearing them if we weren't. 
Mm. Uh, any other questions you have for me, Captain? I do have to turn some other ears in the room. Oh, I'm sure you do. You're a busy man, Admiral. Oh, I wish I wasn't. I'm supposed to be talking to some... I'm supposed to be at a meeting over with the... Uh... Never mind. <laughs> anyway, enjoy the party. We actually are here to somewhat relax. Beats a briefing room. Yes, it does. He nods to you and walks away. Have a good one. You too, Captain. Is there anything you do at the party while you're there? There are a fair amount of uh, officers in the room. Hmm. As it stands, I think I am good. And as a quick update to those in the med bay, uh, the, the procedure does take hold. Uh, it's just going to be a matter of time. And the CMO has it well in hand at that point. Once okay. now that you've given now that you've given them a path uh, a path of what to do, because they started from alien entity growing out of this guy's shoulder. Uh, this usually takes us a whole episode to figure out. <laughs> 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 Can we have some experts come in here, please? <laughs> There's like um, of them. Okay, that was lucky. <laughs> right. I'd like, I'd like to uh, I'd like to find out uh, the circumstances from the CMO of how he was brought in. I was um, going to ask similar questions. So I will support her on that. I will, like, let her do the talking and be like, you go, girl. Uh, presence security or presence medicine? Difficulty uh... three. This person does not want to talk about this. I'll let her go first, and then and if she doesn't get anywhere, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little counseling on this guy and put him in his place. What did you say? Presence? Presence medicine or presence security? Oh, okay. Yeah, let's do medicine on that. Uh, is what was the difficulty? Uh, three. We do have four momentum. Yeah, feel free to spend some of that. And you have cautious medicine, I think, right? Yeah, but when talking about medical things, does that count? Hey, it's anytime you use medicine. Does she seem unsure when she's like about to say something to him? No. no. Okay. This is this is strictly Jessica being. Okay, I just make sure it was an undertones because if she seems yeah, unsure, no. then then I will be like, I will step in because I will well, own this guy. <laughs> uh, what was your query? Uh, if uh, uh, cautious medicine counts if you're talking about talking to someone about medicine. As long as you're using the medicine discipline, it counts. Okay, then I'll take a moment. I'm just. In case I roll goose eggs again. Yeah. Don't even need it. Bang. Uh, do we think we can get any momentum out of that? We got um, one, I think. So at least three. one, and then the assist. Oh, that's right. You're assisting. Yep. I put on a smile. Uh, let's see here. I have persuasion. So I'm like, yeah, what she said. <laughs> you know? <laughs> In your face. Oh, uh, there you go. <laughs> and we're at full. Good, good. That's my girl. <laughs> it's like, what? Well, I really can't go into too much detail, but what I can tell you is that they were in the... They were a... Doing something for Starfleet Security. in a sector of space uh, within the expeditionary's uh, patrol area. Um, and they came in. And I was expecting to see security gold. I saw them in civilian clothes. So at that point, I tried to pull my rank and my security codes on it, and I got locked out at the admiralty level. So right. I have no idea beyond that. But this feels like security or intelligence to me. Fair enough. So there could be more, she says. People. None of them have been brought the into my uh, onto this base. This is the first one. Onto no, the base the... or into your medical bay, she says. Onto the base uh, that we have uh, various. Uh, once we found this one, I had a ship a station wide scan for it to see if there's anything else uh, elsewhere on the ship. Good, very good, she says. That's excellent work. She says to the chief. Yeah. Well, it makes me. 
both concerned and and a little bit relieved that this is Starfleet and not some random civilian that's come into contact. Are we checking to see if anyone new be coming to the base with this type of thing? I have it as a standing order right now, just cause, just because I don't know if, how contagious this is. I don't know how uh, how much it's uh, how, and especially now I'm gonna redouble my efforts to keep an eye out. Just cause, uh, from what you've told me. If you need any assistance, uh, Chief, she says, with your commanding officer. <laughs> I'll be fine, thanks, though. I've dealt with the Admiral more than a few It's a matter of convincing her. Uh, if you run into more uh, people that have come into contact with these crystals, mm -hmm. uh, be polite. They seem to appreciate that. Positive mm -hmm. thinking. I'll also try, I'll call for a transfer for some more uh, empaths and telepaths. There should be there should be some I can get from the fleet. At least on. I would, I would highly recommend that. Hmm. That was and the only can... way we survived our encounter. Survived. She looks over. Survived. She looks over, and then she looks back at him, and she says, "If you need to contact me, she says, feel free to contact me. I will assist and help, Doctor." She looks him. Thank you very much, Commander. She will wait for the guy to kind of walk off, and then she'll look at the Denoblian and say, that was some fancy talking. You really got him to speak up. He really didn't want to give any information. Hmm. Picked up a few things from my captain. She smiles at you. So who is your captain? Oh, Captain Grinnan, USS Kismet. The Luna class ship. Indeed. Really? Do you drink? Not typically, but socially occasionally. Would you like to share a beer after we've succeeded on this endeavor? A betazoid that drinks beer, huh? Okay. I would be interested to accompany you, sure. She says, I'm interested in knowing more about your ship and your captain. I'm actually catching a ride with you, she says, to my assignment. Oh. Well. And we figured case... a good celebration, she says. Good operation just took place, she says. Saving lives. Yes. That's why I'm here. What is and her with, feelings right now? With that, uh, we will actually move on to the next scene. I'll message okay. you. Okay. Um, lose one momentum. Yay. Gonna roll things along a little bit. Uh, da -da -da -da. Yeah, I, I get the distinct impression that we're taking far longer than we should. Oh no, don't worry about it. Uh, that that what you gained information from that encounter. It's not too much of a bother. <laughs> it's like no, no, that's important. You found that out. That could have been a like, and something blew up on the station. Oops. The, the role playing <laughs> oh. is the spice in the sauce, my friend. You can't have a good sauce without a good spices. Oh, are we out in space now? It's a couple days later. Oh, alrighty. And the Kismet has since launched out into space uh, toward a free port. As you guys are on mission, it, it, it's going to take a few days to get there to begin with. Um, but you're on your way. Uh, Captain, if you wish to, uh, do you wish to add a supplementary log? Yes, yes, I think I shall. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes. Meanwhile, Penn's been just doing loop-to-loops out in space. <laughs> Captain's oh, log. no. Captain's log, stardate 53840.0. The USS Kismet has been ordered to investigate a Ferengi-owned free port, Terminus Parazel. Starfleet suspects that Calcut crystals are being sold there. Although it's beyond Federation space, the Starfleet Exploration Diplomatic Corps want to find out who's violating the Calcut quarantine. After all, talks with the crystalline beings have been halted, as they believe the Federation is party to the theft of their people. 
that combined with the death of the only diplomatic point between the Cowkits and the Federation certainly hasn't been helping matters. Hopefully, when we arrive at Terminus Perazzle, we'll learn more. And log. And we come upon, uh, we cut to the next scene of the, of a shuttle, of someone in the engineering bay who is currently working on a problem. Uh, Lieutenant Aran. Yes. Uh, your, uh, for the time being, uh, your character is effectively for role purposes. Uh, your character is the chief engineer. It's more, uh, you have a Lieutenant Vata over you. But they're more mentoring you to take care of such a large department on your own. Uh, but they're large—they're a chief engineer, but they're kind of just helping you out. They're l largely letting you decide what you're doing, and then just giving you pointers every once in a while of, mm, "You want to do this first. And it's like, "Oh, okay." Because right, cool. lieutenant juniors normally don't get to run their own ship departments. No. Not on a ship this big. No. <laughs> I am extremely lucky. Um. um but it seems that as you guys were warping, uh, you've just lost the full... Uh, you guys were moving at cruising speed. I think the cruising of a Luna is 775. Something like that. Nine, yeah. Oh, mother. And mm -hmm. you've dropped a full warp point. You're down to like six. Oh, man. But I was briefed about this, right? Yep. I, uh, there's been a briefing from the uh, uh, flight department about this. From uh, right. Pend. Cool. Then, uh, yeah. How do we go about fixing this then? Um, hmm. Well, I assume you're going to report it. Oh yeah, that that too. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Vata says, "Yeah, I assume you're going to report this." <laughs> well, yes. Um, I tap, yeah. he, tap, he taps his combat combat and says, "Captain." Um, Grenin here. Hi. Uh, this is. Uh, Lieutenant Darren in uh, engineering. So we've dropped a uh, a warp point. Um, I'm just uh, reporting so that you know. I see. Well, see if you can figure out what's causing it. Yes, Captain. Iron out. Uh, well. So Vata, what um, what would you do in this situation? I would lean into my strengths, uh, but the first thing you would want to do is a diagnostic, uh, either a level three or a level two diagnostic. Uh, okay. If you want anything more than the level two, you're going to need to stop the ship uh, entirely, and that's something you need to tell the captain about. But that would take days uh, to perform. So a level three or level two might be prudent here. Well. In, uh, in that case, let's uh, let's let's run a level two diagnostic. Very well. Uh, is there anything you wish the engineering team to do, well, or do you wish them to continue what they're doing? They ought to continue what they're doing. I'll I'll handle this on my own. Very uh, well. You may help if you'd like, but I'll I'll manage. Uh, the challenge you're sitting at is reason uh, engineering difficulty. Three. All right. Ooh, boy. Uh, Feel free to take some momentum, my pal. Okay. I'm. This is a Luna class, right? Yes. All right. So I'm gonna ask the computer to bring up a Luna class schematic, uh, especially the warp engines. Okay. Um. Because I uh, live by the rule of. Um, it's fine. I read the manual. Um. And I have a a focus in warp field dynamics. I don't know if that applies. It does. But here we go. Uh, so I'm pretty rusty in roll twenty. Uh, mm. Could I have some assistance in this? Um, uh, with the rolls? Yeah. Yeah. I, or just uh, how so... to make them? Yeah. That too. So, so what you want to task roll in your dice roller? Sorry. No, go for it. Uh, where it says task roll in your dice roller, you're going to select the amount of dice. Um, 
in this case, I think you'll be rolling three because you'll be spending one uh, momentum mm -hmm. to gain an extra die. Normally, two. And um, you select that, make sure it's like uh, lighter than the other ones because sometimes you have to click twice for it. And if you have a focus applied, you make sure that the focus is selected yes. And then you'll click the Starfleet icon next to task roll to actually make it. Okay, this is moving a little bit too fast for me. Um, I usually oh, play IRL. Uh, okay, so what do I do? <laughs> sorry. So you click on uh, an attributes. You sure. click, uh, do you have the sheet open? Sorry. For I have my sheet open now. Yeah. Okay, so as you can see, um, you All probably right, see yeah. me clicking and highlighting stuff. Yeah. Um, so you select the attributes you're going to be using. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, it was what I said. I said reason, and engineering. Yeah. So just click those, and you'll hi highlight them. Uh, click them and highlight. All right. Um, I'm not sure. You click on the button that's on the sheet. On the sheet. All right. Uh, here's your sheet. Yeah. Uh, is it control? No? Yeah, it's reason engineering. Reason engineering. All right. Yeah. There you go. Got that. Now in task roll over here, uh, no, most rolls are at two, so you normally don't really need to move it unless you're buying dice, uh, at which point you would move it higher. If you're assisting someone, it's usually at a one. Um, complication range, normally you leave that at one, unless I say uh, add one to the complication at two, or complication's five, you know. And if um, complication is five, then you really hecked up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, to give you a quick idea, complication range on a, is it's the range from one to five. How if you get an extra complication or something bad happens? So yeah. normally, if you roll a one, it's bad. But the worse the complication, the more likely something bad happens. Mm -hmm. No, if you roll a one, you're good. If you roll a twenty, you're bad. Oh, it's the other way around, right? Twenty. Yeah, it's yeah. counting down from twenty. Duh. That's uh, that's my first system I played. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, you are using a focus warp field dynamics. So normally uh, most things are focused no. So you just click, you would focus, highlight yeah. yes. I'm not sure I have the dice roller up. I. It's the character sheet. Yeah, it's everything's done from the character sheet with using the, because uh, it has a bunch of uh, things put into it. That so if you say, for you. yeah, if you see where attributes and disciplines are, it's on the right of that. It just says dice roller focuses complication range tech. see it yeah right task task roll uh yeah focus used uh complication range what was the complication uh one, one. what's the difficulty uh difficulty uh was i said three yep yeah. uh so take a momentum uh, so that means you're going to roll three dice because basically what you can do is you can spend the momentum that you've seen us earning to mm. buy extra dice. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm familiar so, with that. And what talents do you have? I uh, my talents are bold engineering, testing a theory, procedural compliance, and untapped potential. I'm guessing, like uh, bold engineering you know? and pro procedural, procedural compliance, since I'm using uh, since I'm using a, uh, a schematic, I suppose. Uh, I'm going to look at procedural compliance. Uh, for bold engineering, what you would need to do to benefit from that is if you uh, gave me threat. So basically, right. uh, and that would activate that talent. Right now, it's not really doing anything yet. Hmm. Oh, I, I see why you asked for the... Um, I see why you asked for the schematics, but that wouldn't work. You, you need to spend momentum to, to do this. Okay. Because well, what it says is by spending two momentum to create an advantage, obtaining the proper technical manuals and documentation prior to attempting a task to work on a ship's system, cool. you can re-roll a d20 during the next engineering task. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, I get what you were going for, but I don't think it'll work in this case, because we would have had to spend momentum. 
He still okay. can. Because he hasn't rolled yet. Whoa. Uh, well, I, I'd rather save that sure. for when he might need it. Okay, so fo diagnostic. So focus used, complication range one. One. Yep. Last so roll three. three. Yeah, exactly. And uh, no challenge dice. Nope. Yeah, you don't just worry about that yet. Yeah. Little Starfleet symbol next to Starship Task Roll. All right. Um, pressing. Nice. You did it. Nope. And now he's playing the game. All right. Yay! Woohoo! <laughs> Three successes, exactly what you needed. And yeah, that's, like that's basically every roll you'll ever need to do, the exact same process. <laughs> yeah. Alright, then uh, then I think I'll survive this. Cool. Uh, what you discover through your diagnostic mm -hmm. uh, is that there is some sort of... Something's interfering with the warp field. Um, something is... Cause, it's like a... Some sort of interference field. The warp bubble will is still stable, but it's not as strong as it should be. Hmm. It's almost like the ship's moving through molasses. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Did we get a report on the bridge, or was the captain in his ready about this? Uh, on the bridge. Yeah. All right. Um, then I, captain, permission to make a more in-depth scan of the surrounding space to determine if there's any localized anomaly. Agreed. S turn our eyes outward, see what you can find. Alright. I'd like to make a scan. That will be reason science. Uh, difficulty of one. Assisted, Assisted by... by the ship. Yeah, okay. Yep. We're so going to generate some momentum, guys. So difficulty zero. <laughs> one, one. No, well, it can only redu be reduced to difficulty one by the ship sensors. Really? I think so. Oh, no, minimum of zero. No. Dif difficulty. Difficulty zero, we automatically get at least one success. What reduced the difficulty down? It Our advanced it. sensor suites. Oh, thank you. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the most broken talent in the game. So, guys, we're going to have some momentum for obtaining information here, unless I really heck up. Uh, no whammies. Uh, I'm going to use my unified field theory focus. That applies, yep. Nice. And... I have positronic brain, so I'll gain an extra success. That's four successes plus the ship's roll. Uh, oh, okay, I'll, I'll roll it. Uh, sensor science, or did uh -huh. you say sensors engineering? Yep. Sensor science. Mm. <laughs> well, I'll <laughs> use two of the momentum we generated to cancel. Yeah, you can because you can do that. Um, so yeah, uh, cool. you get a scan of the area, and I'm gonna type something up to you as and the computer processes. All we ha all we got out of that was one momentum. Oh well. <laughs> oh, and you didn't even need a focus. You just Oop. just nailed it. Who'd oh, we lose? Varro, or not Varro? Myth. That's oh no. Be, that's gonna take some getting used to. Yep. I know. That's why I was like, I was like, oh no, what do I call? Uh I mean, technically, we did lose Varro. Shut up, You're welcome. Okay, what happened? Uh, you you made the roll, and we spent two momentum to avoid a complication, and something is currently getting typed out to you right now. Cool. We only got one momentum out of that. Oh wait, no, we got two. We got two. You have an automatic. Because Positronic brain. Yeah. Two momentum. So we're one over. I don't like the fact that you've put us on the tactical map. You only did that again, so I can play with the ship. Then again, you're we don't have uh, our security officer, so we are even further bone. Yes. Captain, I am reading some sort of interference field in the vicinity, approximately 10 light years wide. It's distorting our. Uh, could you spend that uh, momentum to ask the uh, to find the epicenter? Yeah, I'm gonna do. Uh, the epicenter seems to be emanating uh, the space station you're heading towards. Oh, well. 
that's not that's not at all suspicious. Hmm. Hmm. A subspace disturbance field emanating from that station. Hmm. I don't like this. I have a hunch that this might have something to do with how they're penetrating the Kauket quarantine zone. Well, possibly, Cap. Oh. Cap, I would have sent you all of the information that I gathered when oh. I dealt with the guy. I dealt with him. <laughs> exactly. Uh, what would that be specifically that I don't already know about? Um, the there was a, a person with Calcat crystals crafted to their bone on yeah. the station uh, that those crystals changed species and the blue crystals seem to be have the same components as platinum laced throughout. The crystal did? Yeah. It seemed to be converting uh, uh possibly the tissue and bone into platinum in that some small that's odd the way the the red ones seem to be pardon me uh converting things that were similar to to dilithium the blue ones convert to platinum oh what is that sensors picking up uh ships as you're getting closer to the station Oh, those are the... what's it? Ferengi vessel on sensors. Understood. Is it one of those... is it a Decora class? Uh, Marauders. Yeah, Decora class Marauder. I... Uh, as it stands, we're not super worried about them. Mr. Pend, uh, bring us, uh, bring us in closer. Uh, that I suppose normally would be tactical, but we don't have tactical. So, uh, Lieutenant Myth, uh, see if you can open up a comms to the station. Understood. I'm assuming I don't need to roll for that. Uh, hold there. You start moving forward. I just realized I was laying those on the GM layer like a smart person. Mm. There we go. Um,. The ship comes to a all uh, the warp bubble pops, and you're dropped into uh, normal space. No, oh, just it pops. Yeah, like the bubble just destabilizes and goes. <sighs> the hell? Is that a ship wide thing that you may notice? Yeah, Captain to Engineering, what just happened? Uh, we're not sure, Captain. Um, I think we dropped out of warp. Well. Can see that, but why? Working on it. Um, could I have a report from science as well? Science here. We are near the epicenter of a field that seems to be destabilizing our warp field. <clears throat> All right. I'll, um, hmm. Hmm. Preliminary analysis suggests it's being generated by the station we're approaching. Well then, um, yeah, I'll look into how we are, uh, how we interact with it. Uh, stand by. Uh, My assistance is available. If how? Hold on a hot sec. My heater just turned on full blast. Oh, oh that's <laughs> Oh, let's right. see here. Um, what do, what do? All right, Lieutenant, the warp field is destabilized and uh, it's full stop, aside from impulse. So that would indicate that we seem to, it's purely a subspace problem. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you propose we do? Well, we need to get there, right? Indeed. Yeah. Let's restart the warp engines. Very well. Uh, to get it going, 
Um, it will be a reason plus... Oh, you kind of already figured that out. You yeah. need to do a control plus engineering, uh, currently difficulty five, but you do have an engineering department that can help you to bring it down to four. Mm -hmm. And you are doing it, you are trying to fix this from engineering, so that brings it down to three. Cool. Uh, let's see here, and I still have warp field dynamics. I would say if you have, you said you had bold engineering, didn't you? Yeah, I have bold engineering. So it might be a good idea to give the GM one threat and spend two momentum for two extra dice. Hmm. Actually, my suggestion, spend two momentum, create an advantage. All right. Mm. Use, uh, your, use your schematics thing. Yeah. Since we have so much momentum, I'll do that. Um, okay. What that does is it decreases the difficulty, but it also lets you use your schematic thing. Cool. So uh, that would be a task roll of what, since the compli uh, complication is three and I'm using my focus of... Uh, it's a uh, task roll of two. The default roll is two. Cool. And the, uh, the difficulty is three, not the complication, I think, right? Right. Difficult. And actually difficulty has been brought down to two because you have a advantage helping you out. Mm -hmm. So... Let's see and here. you have two re-rolls. <laughs> so I... have I'm using my focus. Yes, definitely. So the complication range would be two, and the task goal is two. Correct? Complication one. Complication one. Yeah. No, task roll is three because you're spending a, you're giving him a threat. Okay. Uh, in that case, I am rolling. We'll see. Okay. So that's two momentum. It's two momentum. Good investment. Uh, you are able to get the engines uh, back online, but you seem to. Uh, it seems that the, the max speed of the ship is now six. Hmm. The warp bubble is very unstable. It's not so much the ships. It's not so much that the ship can't do anything. It's that it's the space around it has changed. All right. So I tap my. Uh, he taps his uh, his combat and says, "I'm sorry, Captain. Six is the fast we can go." Well, I don't necessarily like it, but given how close we are to the station, let's see if we can get in there and get some answers. Captain I'll take now. a clip. Yeah. All right. Fine. We'll have to take a closer look when we arrive. Agreed. That's... Once we get pulled in, uh, lieutenants, we can probably do a full and locked into the station's power system. We could probably get a more detailed uh, a diagnostic of the system. Absolutely. Uh, you may wish to go to the bridge to coordinate with the science officer. I'll do that. Uh, you're in charge. Cool, cool, cool. So he uh, he leaves for uh, the bridge. Okay. What is happening on the bridge while our good lieutenant is uh, heading up there? I, I, I don't want to say too much because, God, my audio is awful right now. <laughs> Not too bad. It's yeah, it's not just picking little, up. There's just like a little bit of like windy sound in the background. It's honestly yeah, fan noise, but it's not causing you to break up or anything. So. No, I know it is. It's just, I hate it. I hate it so much. Uh, uh. <laughs> okay. So, in that case, as I had asked Myth, uh, we get a uh, get in touch with the station. Um, give me. I will actually ask you for a roll. Oh. Um, it's going to be uh, control engineering, difficulty one, assisted by ship's communications engineering. Huh. All right. turned off you get one momentum from that uh, as you notice as you're making the connection yeah, it does seem to uh, the sub subspace channel seems to be very uh, has high level of interference 
Uh, not enough to drown you out because you're so close to what you're trying to talk to, but if you wanted to talk to, say, uh, Command back home, uh, the difficulty would be way higher. Right. This is Terminus Parasol. How can we be of assistance to you? Is it a Ferengi? Yes. Ma motherfucker. Okay. Um... <laughs> Language, Captain. Ah. <laughs> uh. uh. Parasol, well, this is um, this is Captain Harmon Grennan of the USS Kismet. Uh, who do I have the pleasure of speaking to? You are talking to Damon Parasol. You're coming upon my station. Is there something wrong? Oh, not at all. Uh, we've just been sent out by Starfleet to make sure that everything is shipshape around here. We've been encountering some trouble with local subspace and in the region, and we've been asked to look into it. I see. Well, feel free to do what you like. This is a free space after all, Captain. Insight command. I'm fucking insight command in this shit. There's nothing free about Ferengi space. <laughs> 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 I know. That, that's the great line of the episode right there. Dum dum dum! Thank you, thank you. I'll be here every Tuesday from now on. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, no, with so, that attitude, you're not? No. That guy, you gotta listen to that guy. He knows what he's talking about. Insight, insight command. Insight and the doctor. Command. Doctor's it, great, too. Opposed? Yeah, I, I assume so. Uh, let me see what I got. Let me see what I can do here. Um, if for some reason I get an extra D20, I'm not sure why. You do? <laughs> Just blow all of the momentum. Yeah, I'm gonna spend. Honestly, I think I might just spend three momentum on this. Whoa. Oh dear. Yeah. Greedy captain. I mean, you're the captain. Oh, this... As you said, we're in Ferengi space. Nothing's uh, free. I don't have any focuses. Complication rate one. Insight command. Let's see what I. And I'm gonna re-roll that complication. <laughs> wow, I really blew that roll, didn't I? An 18, a 17, and a 20. So that's two successes to two successes, and I think I'm technically the attacking party. Actually, you tie, so it just kind of cancels out. You, you both, you get the feeling that he's, there is a sense that he may be not telling you everything, but then again, He's Ferengi. Of course he's not telling you everything. <laughs> but then again, it's one of those, he probably even knows that, even on his end, it's probably obvious to him that, yeah, he came up a little sketchy, but he doesn't seem to care. Yeah. Yeah, and unfortunately, Frank. our counselor can't, can't psychic this shit. Maybe and that's when to. the counselor walks onto the bridge. Nice. Well, it, our counselor can't. Yeah, I don't, I don't, need, I don't need a psychic that Ferengi to well, own him socially. Well, it, yeah, well, it's it's Ferengi can't uh, be mine. It's true. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's I, what I'm saying. Can't can't psychic that. Uh, but you do oh, have yeah, like, the counselor walk into the bridge. Yeah, uh, the counselor and the uh, the engineer of Aran have walked onto the bridge, and Aran kind of uh, walk. You're able to walk. There is a just as a note to you, Aran. Um, mm -hmm. You can benefit from ha working from engineering, either from engin engineering or if you're at your engineering station. It's only when you're not at those posts that you don't get that benefit. All right, cool. So, so don't be anywhere else on the ship. <laughs> don't be in some Jeffrey's tube. <laughs> yeah, well, if you're you might in have to Jeffrey's go there at some you point. You can do many, 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 many interesting things. <laughs> yes. Captain uh, Grennan, she says, uh, Counselor Dai, ah, reporting for duty, I guess, she says. Very uh, good. Lieutenant uh, Jameson Aaron, for your duty. Right. Uh, Mr. Pend, bring us in to dock. Uh, Counselor, if you could join me in my ready room. Sure. I take a look at the bridge. Is there an extra seat for a counselor, or is there just the two seats there uh, for the well, XO? And... There, are the, there are the two seats. There, well, there is no XO. Sweet, that's, no XO. My <laughs> that's my seat. That's my seat. Oh, sweet. Okay, cool. I'll walk with him. 
walk. Probably get some bad feelings over that one. <laughs> well, that's that's the point, right? You gotta mix it up to to get a get a get a rise out of the captain. No, to get a, a really a, a really good uh, uh damn it, omelet. Yeah, there you go. Oh, dear. I'll follow him. Yep, uh, captain's gonna go into his ready room, and he's going to take a seat. He will take a seat. Okay, she stands at attention. Her arms behind her back. She's, she looks way too young for three pips. Way too young. She looks well, like she might be like nineteen or twenty, and she's got three like pips. Fresh out of the academy. That's what she looks like. Yeah. Oh, really? And she's, she's a looker too. Yeah. She's a looker. Captain. She's a looker. She has an hourglass figure and kind of the body of a more of like a hourglass type model. Mm -hmm. And on the opposite side of that. You have Captain Brennan. Guy looks like he... Guy is... Guy, you've read his file. 32. Thir like, 31, 32, I think. Uh, I had him at. And he does not look it. Guy looks 26. Nice. Guy looks 26, kind of... Uh, I don't want to say it's, it's not messy. It's, it's sort of this slightly ruffled, coppery hair. Um... And the four, uh, he has the four captain pips. And so, I counterpoint to you, this guy looks way too young to be captain. Sweet. I, I agree. He is way too young to be and, captain. And <laughs> oh. I, will, I will even posit to you, on the other end, quite attractive. Okay. <laughs> How many things do you have to try and fucking sleep with? <laughs> Apparently not enough. Don't worry, the counselor always wins this one. Always wins this one. Yep. Grenin, two momentum spend to kill that complication that Pend almost had. Okay. She, she stands at attention, she waits for him to speak. Well, I uh, know we haven't had much time to get introduced to one another, but um, <sighs> now I would almost say is not the best time. Things are, I wouldn't say dire, of course, but... Stress, stressful, she says, Captain? Yes, stressful. We're being asked to look into what could be a very delicate diplomatic situation. And on top of all of that, we're at a tiny little trading post out in the middle of nowhere that seems to be disrupting local subspace. On top of that, we have uh, Ferengi running it that... Of course knows more than he's letting on. Right, 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 right. Um, well, she says, with respect, she says, uh, you've been on a series of stressful missions, it would seem, after reviewing some of the files. Quite observant. She hands a pad to him. She says, Admiral Ludwig uh, gave me some orders to tend to your crew and help your crew out during this stressful time did, and he's going to take the pad and he's going to take a look at it. Now, it may seem like a review, she says, but it's not that. She says, I'm here to help your crew, to talk to them, to make sure that everyone's ready and capable to do their duties. Of course. I wouldn't expect any less out of a counselor. Of course, these are the Admiral's orders. Right. And he's going to over the orders. Anything out of out of place? Uh, basically, your crew is on a uh, psyche valve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good times. <laughs> well, given, and they get, they couch in a lot of flowery language, but it's one of those, yeah, you went through, it's, you've gone from one crisis to another, and you lost the senior officer. Yeah, we're going to have a counselor along with you for a little while, make sure you guys are okay. And they would normally have kept you all longer, but they yeah. kind of need your ship out and moving. Yep. Well, I'd say this is a surprise, but it's not. And he sets the pad down. So, given the stressfulness of the situation, she's I can still do my job to the best of my abilities for you, Captain, and for the Admiral. Of course. In the, this case, uh, it looks like we're going to be going up against 
quite a number of lies and deception. My favorite. I could really use a... I could really use a good counselor with some insight. How does he feel right now? Um... Like he was about to say something else, but he didn't. I'll try to, I'll try my best to be reserved, to observe, she says, and to point out and help you as best I can, Captain, she says, during the mission. Uh, but my job is a continuing job, she says. It doesn't end until I leave the ship. Yeah, that's, that sounds about right. I'm used to it by now. The XO, she said. You were close to the XO? Well, and the captain sits back and, you know, he puts, you know, he puts his hands together. Close as close as we could be. We came from very different worlds. Well. But he was my first XO, and... There's nothing like your first, she says. Hmm. She smiles at him as she kind of leans on one hip. Don't encourage him. <laughs> <laughs> you should know, Captain, that I am on my way to the Eon, she says, to be their counselor, chief medical officer, and second officer to that ship. She says, so you can utilize me in any fashion. She says, as a... <sighs> I, I, you have a chief medical officer, obviously, already, she says, and uh, she's very good at her job. Um, but if you need someone, she says, a second officer or someone to fill in as your XO, she says, in the meantime, she says, I can do that. I've been trained, I have my BOE, and, well, I'll be a second officer on the Aeon, she says, which is a sovereign class vessel. I'm aware, I've read up on the Aeon, and it's... Uh, pending position as the new flagship for the tenth. Um, she smiles. I've met uh, met now Captain Prax uh, on a couple occasions, and she'll do just fine. Us young officers have to stick together, right? She says. So, if I can aid you, she says by filling in for your XO. She says I would be happy to help. Anytime. And the captain smiles, and it, some of the stress that you've seen on him is alleviated. And then it sort of returns, and he goes, Okay, well, as pleasant as this conversation has been, we really do have to get back to business. I think I might be calling a senior staff meeting once we've docked. Of course. Jesus, can I ask one more question? Yes? Your current second officer? Uh, who is my current? Uh, I think my... That, that would be... Uh, that would be Dr. Efrix. Right. I don't think she's going to be filling in as XO. She says, so, so then I take it the position is mine while I'm well, here. You, uh, she is a commander, right? Yeah, so. Well, you do hold the rank necessary for it, so for the time being, I'll allow it. Must I say, she says, and before we go back to the bridge, it's very impressive that you're a captain at such a young age. Truly inspiring. Likewise. She will turn and she'll go to walk out if uh, he dismisses her. Yeah, he, he will. Okay. <laughs> that happened. <laughs> well, that's immediately a different dynamic. She will waddle her way out of his... his, uh... Waddle? Ready room. Waddle? <laughs> yeah, she has the hips, right? So she kind of, you know, walks. Uh, I think you mean sway. Sway. <laughs> sway. <laughs> Shall I say, works, you, right? have you just left his sex dungeon Waddle instead? Jesus. Entirely different. <laughs> okay, okay. Sway. She will sway. She will saunter out the door. <laughs> See, that's what we need a crew for, right? God damn. <laughs> Thanks for the advice, guys. Woo! Who we? She can't, will, I can't will. wait for my counseling session. Yeah. Oh. Waddle down the line for me. No, anyway. Um, <laughs> oh, Christ. Uh, the <sighs> Kismet pulls up to dock with Terminus Parasol. 
Right. Ta-da, I part the ship. Before we did, I would definitely sit down in that Exo's chair when we went back on the bridge, like in front of everybody. And, and just get the feel for everybody's feelings. Just pointing that out. Yeah. Oh, you How does everyone this? feel about her in the Exo chair? Uh, indifferent. Because obviously it's her place. Nothing. Yeah, nothing. Uh, no, he's having <laughs> an issue with his uh, heater in the background. Yeah. So that's sure that why he's he would do that having some over. issues. Reinforce there. Yeah. You get nothing from Pend. Uh, the SS Sakona is hailing the Kismet. Uh, which one is that? That'd be the Vulcan ship. Ah. Oh. On screen. Kismet. You see a uh, female Vulcan uh, dressed in the uh, Federa uh, Federation, uh, the Vulcan science sort of uh, robes with the writing along the uh, flap of the jacket that she's wearing. Oh, yeah. You mean like the vertical writing? Yep. I love that. Captain, I was not aware the Kismet was coming out here. It might be a little lower, but yes, not... Uh... Too much lower. Subspace anomalies in the region, and Starfleet wanted us to take a look. Well, if you had need of any further assistance, we are here at your disposal. Although, be advised that the uh, Crito may attempt to charge you. I believe he said a toll for scanning the region. Uh, feel free to discount it, as it is patently false. Well, I'd say I'm surprised, but I'm not. Hmm, quite. Well, if there's anything that we can do to be assistance to you, or if anything you know could help in our, in our search, that would be appreciated. We will surely comply if that is the case, Captain. Ah, well, in that case, kismet out. And she blinks out once you cut the signal. Hmm. Fascinating. Any feelings of distrust? No. The ship is hailed by the parasol. On screen. You get an audio only message of Fun Time, Games, Water Parks. See them all today at our favorite new park of Parasol on decks 14 and 25. And then <laughs> the feed cuts. <laughs> and the captain's eyes twitches. I'm, uh, I'm running a. Well, uh, the. Uh, like. A, a virus search for that one. <laughs> <laughs> no pop up windows on my, oh my ship. Gonna thanks. run the Norton antivirus. Oh yeah, give, oh yeah. Give me a reason science difficulty one. All right. I actually have science, so that's good. Reason Man, science difficulty that was, one. That was something. And it's two dice. And no, no focus. All right. I think that's the right. Got yourself on momentum. Cool. And actually, you're assisted by the ship here uh, oh. through computers. Um, computer security, actually. Cool. All right. All right. Stand by. All, all we need now is a recording for the the Ferengi going, this is Captain Grennan and this is my favourite water park in the system. <laughs> I was just making that joke. <laughs> <laughs> and back. 
Uh, from that roll, everybody dies. Now, um, ow. Oh, man. Oh. Take that, my fellow GMs. I blew up a ship, too. Now, um... <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like your first one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Raising. Um, so, Lieutenant Oran, um, you discovered that there is a bit you of... You should just uh, give him the middle finger in chat. I wouldn't call it so much malware as a in your computer system as there's a file that is solely about to uh, infiltrate the rest of the ship and display ads on various parts uh, various panels delete easily <laughs> deleted since you just since you caught it so quickly yeah <laughs> so uh, no viruses uh, captain uh, let's uh, yeah let's see lieutenant <laughs> Lieutenant, what... them. Yeah, I and think I think you are the only one who's actually blown up the ship. Can you set something uh, to keep an eye out for those viruses in the future? Oh yeah, yeah. easily done. Lieutenant, is there a way to? Yeah, because I know I've blown up a station, but that says a player. Them? I think you're the only one who's uh, actually blown up well, a player ship. They aren't spreading yeah. anymore. So she says, "Did you contain it?" She says, "Or did you purge it from the system?" I purged it. She says, next time, is there a way that we can contain it in some fashion? Well, I'm sure we'll have a next time. Mm. Says, uh, I can set up a program for that. Come on. Here we go. She looks to the captain. Thank you. Permission to make a program, she says, to capture those malicious... Hey, you don't have to explain it to me. <laughs> I completely no, agree. No. If someone gets themselves blown up, it's their own fucking fault. She says, do it, miss. Uh, that will be uh, control science uh, difficulty two. Assisted by ships, computers plus mm, I'll say science. Right. Science or security, either department could do it. Um, Any focus in xenotechnology? Um, I'm gonna say no. Yeah, I was say, uh, well, actually, I take that back. I'll allow it with an increased complication. Hmm. Eh. What's the eh. difficulty of this task again? Two. Two. I just, I'd rather I'm... take a momentum. Yeah, I'll take momentum and no, no focus. What? what? Oh. oh. Didn't Roll even need more. it. Yeah, you're able to set up a uh, advantage, if you will, of a preset program that can uh, capture a uh, such information again. Mm -hmm. cool. All right, uh, please. Uh, uh, what was the vessel again? The name of it? Which one? The the one that just sent us all the viruses. Oh, that was the station, Terminus Parazol. Oh, yep, station. Beautiful. Okay. Well, I suppose we may as well, uh, uh, may as well try to appear as, as, uh, what's the word, uh, as nonchalant as possible. Uh, Lieutenant Myth, uh, make a, sh uh, open a shipwide channel. Channel open. Attention crew of the USS Kismet, this is Captain Harmon Grennan speaking. We have just made, uh, <coughs> do, on, oops, me. Uh, we have just made, uh, docking at the Ferengi Freeport known as Terminus Parazol. Uh, we are now on shore leave. Feel free to, uh, go and perform any transactions that you might and enjoy yourself to the best of your ability. However, do be careful. Uh, the Kismet has encountered uh, malware in our communications with uh, the Freeport. So just be on the lookout. Uh, that will be all. Communications closed. Now, I'd like to call a senior staff meeting. Guy smiles. And Captain walks into the ready room. Uh, not ready room, from, office room. Uh, sick bay to meet you. Yep, yeah, because you would have been 
you would have been called for the senior staff meeting. Mm-hmm. Uh, who is monitor? Uh, who is monitoring tactical at the moment? That uh, we don't have anyone because our player currently isn't there. Uh, I think it'll be but... Tachiban. Yeah, Tachiban Akira. Okay. Uh, you can use up one of your crew support for them to roll, or um, something oh, might roll? happen. What's the roll? Uh, it is uh, none of your business. Thank you very much. No. Um, <laughs> yes, tell Matt. Totally. It's uh, in. It would be insight security difficulty two. Uh, his is twelve. Anyone have better? Um, I can do insight security thirteen. Yeah. Because right. Myth was probably already at tactical in order to handle the uh, the communications. Uh, I, would, I would almost say narratively, the, the lieutenant said, the ensign, I believe it was. The ensign says, uh, sir, I see something in my sensors. I'm not sure what I'm looking at. And that prompts Myth to kind of look here. at what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, 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 I have many focuses. Will any of them apply? <laughs> Uh, choose one, and we'll see if it's complication or not. Uh, space theory? No. Okay. Linguistics? No. Okay. No, it sounds like this I don't is think the anything. sensors deal. Yeah. So. Some things, if it's close enough, I'll let you have it with a complication. So that's why I'm right. seeing what you're trying to reach for. No, I just don't know what the role is for, so. It's a mystery. Mystery role. All right. Difficulty. Difficulty is two. All right, spending one. Mm -hmm. All right. That sounds up. Oh, there you go. Um. And I can. I'm gonna reroll that one. Oh, fair because... enough. No, wait, I don't have cautious security. I have cautious science. I thought I was making a science roll, and I was not. Oh, does the ship help at all? Uh, it does. Uh, with uh sensor security. Haha. <laughs> so it was only difficulty one. Huh? Darn you people remembering how your ship works. Yeah, yeah. all right. <laughs> yep, and it's so inconvenient. Yeah. Um, but I think you get more momentum out of that. Um, yeah, I'm going to send you something. There's something uh, happening nearby. So we got actually got that momentum back. Mm -hmm. Nice. And that was you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and that's right. You, you haven't had uh, advanced sensors since the engine. So there's a there's some sort of like sensor alert or something as you're walking to the uh, conference room? Yeah, like the answer kind of looks over and says the science officer kind of said, not sure what I'm looking at here on the sensors and then she kind of just turn around back go to one of the like side consoles and pull it up. Do you see that's right there just off the port bow? Yes, I see it. Let me check. I see two warp signatures, not warp signatures, energy signatures. They're very close together, though. I don't really know why. They didn't collide, Cap did they? Captain, the Crito has halted the SS Martin reach with a tractor beam and is preparing... Preparing to what? Yeah, what? Preparing to board her. What? Hail the Ferengi vessel. Calls. No response. Oh boy. Uh, how big of a vessel is the um, uh, the Vulcan ship? Or uh, wait, no. This wait. is the Vulcan ship. Oh god. It's Martin. a Federation I'm ship? Them all mixed up. It's a Federation ship? It's a freighter. It's a freighter. Scale 3. Okay. <clears throat> it is over a Federation freighter. Okay, so it is a Federation freighter, right? Yes. Yep. Okay, and they're tractor beaming them, and we're we're all pretty close to the base, right? 
Uh, they're uh, they're currently at uh, medium range to you right now. Hail the station. Come. This is Terminus Parasol. How can I assist you in your entertainment? The vessel Kilo has just locked its tractor beams on the Federation freighter SSS Martin's reach. Do you have an explanation for this? No, it's not my ship. Perhaps he's exacting a toll. Or giving some helpful advice. With a tractor beam to them? Well, they may be inexperienced in spacefaring. We have been doing this longer than you. I don't think so. Ah, you're not a student of history, are you? Well... I can sell you your very own copy today for a whole bar of latinum. Don't worry, it'll have a complete comprehensive sense of- Communications. Communications terminate. Thank you. I'm already undocking. Yeah, please do. Permission to hail the freighter, sir, six over. We already tried. I think a shuttle would be more discreet. Uh, Pend, if you're trying to undock, uh, you're finding yourself opposed. Uh, you'll well, have to roll to pull yourself free of the docking clamps. Bring it. Mm. As an engineer, I'd like to uh, not break the ship on my first day. <laughs> Don't worry, you've not seen Pend in action. Oh, well, well, I have read about you. <laughs> <laughs> they don't do nice. me justice. Nightmare. I On the other hand, I'd... Yeah. Uh, Captain, if I may be so bold, uh, a probably a um, an away team in a shuttle would be easier since we're stuck here for all intents and purposes. Yes. How many? Uh, how many? Uh, how many borders do we have? Uh, Aaron raises his hand. Uh, the role would... Okay. Uh, the role would be daring con, and it's opposed. Wait, what? To pull free of the station. No, I'm asking how many... We haven't decided to do that yet. Uh, Penn's just asking for information. I'm just throwing it at him. Oh, okay. I was gonna ask uh, how many are there. How many borders would we be dealing with? Sixteen. Oh, God. Permission to bring the ship to yellow alert, Captain. Agreed. Bring us to yellow alert. Calm, officer. She says... He goes and she sits down. Uh, Captain, I've just... We've just left the station. Oh, you have not, sir. I have not. That, that role was to see how many people were... Yeah, we haven't yet. Oh, okay. Well, you got to beat four then. Yeah, I do. Um, you know what? Yeah. I'm gonna spend almost all this thread. <laughs> good roll. Oh my God. It's okay. Yeah. We're okay. You had a good roll. You got this, Ped. Pinned. Probably Pinned. about now. Uh, Efrix makes it to the bridge and is like, "Oh, no one's in the conference room." Uh, that's one complication. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> One and two and three, four and five. Ben, spend yo, spend yo determination. Uh, to be fair, you are getting assisted by the ship's uh, engines plus con. Mm -hmm. So you do have that going. Uh, you might have, you might tie with them anyway. And give, not to mention, uh, they also roll the complication. Yeah, that's going to hurt them on their end. Yeah, I roll two. Ah. Wait. I yeah, I rolled it. On uh, thankfully for you, I'm taking the first one I saw. First one in the log, anyway. Yeah, so in Panda, I'd give him some threat. Did I just say that? I I already gave him threat for the initial roll. So one, two, three, four, and five. Um, well, it's a tie, unfortunately, unless you're doing something else that can get you more, but I think... But you got the complication. I'd like to... Oh yeah, the complication's gonna do something on their end. Don't worry, they're, they're not gonna like what happened. Uh, we do also have some momentum. I'd like to um, roll to assist using um, the ship's shield, since I'm still at the tactical station. I want to change our shield frequency to better allow us to slip out of the tractor beams. 
Uh, I will. If you, hmm. You can do that. Uh, it will cost you two power. All right. That's fine. What's the roll here, guys? Uh, that's going to be control security. All right. Uh, control security. No, it's control security. I'm definite on that. Never mind. Yep. And I'm fine using two power because we have a yep. lot of that. Yeah. And am I technically making an assist roll here or my own roll to do something as an assist? You're assisting. No, how many dice? Yeah, you're just rolling an assist die. All right. Bam. That's one. So it takes two power. That puts us at a whopping 13. Yeah. And the whole ship starts shuddering a little bit as it's try as it starts pulling away uh, laterally away from the port. And then someone on like deck 12 on the lat on the outer section hears a loud crunch as the kismet pulls away. Whoops, not the whole station. <laughs> Good god. My uh... <laughs> You don't take the, the station with you. There you go. <laughs> the commander will shout out report. Uh huh. Uh, I decided to exit negotiations with their station. <sighs> uh, the Kismet's being hailed. On screen. What did you do that for? You have destroyed a very valuable part of my station. I hope you intend to repay me for the damages your ship has done. By the way, the ship is still being forwarded. I'll note that to you guys. Uh, which ship? Uh, the Martin's Reach. It's still in, in distress. Yeah. You While you're having this conversation. You can send the bill to Starfleet Command. It will be a large bill. Sending it now luck with that close comms uh you're sending a data will, packet i will look over at the cat oh, oh he says wait, that. we set up a thing to deal with such data packets <laughs> throw, it, throw it in the bin yeah Whoop. she'll look or over here when, he, when he says that quarantined <laughs> let's uh let's get out there get dunked Head's the comm officer, right? Hmm? Who is Head's, Head's the con, con officer. Flight. Okay. He's, and he's also doing communications? Uh, no. That was communications. I'm sorry, who is communications? It broke up. That would be me. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, she says, any suggestions on how, it, how to get them to respond to us? She says, and to reach them communication-wise. They are receiving our hails, as far as I can tell, Commander. I don't believe they wish to respond. I agree. Maybe a counterboard? Hmm. And hold that thought for a moment. Uh, quick question for you guys. <clears throat> um, I've gone over time more than I intended to. Um, if you want me to keep going, I can. I'm free, but I don't know if you guys want me to hold here. Because I do have a moment. I do have a cliffhanger thing to do, but I don't know if you want me to do it yet. I would love to keep uh, going. Well, if you want to do the cliffhanger thing now, not, now might actually be... Well, it's 9.05. We usually go till when? Like The question is, is can people play longer? Yeah, that's the question. Uh, um, I'd like to end by like 9.30ish, so if we have something going over then... It, 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 it will know. likely go over, because you have the whole... You have to deal with the ship and all that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, if you have a cliffhanger that would be good now, then... I certainly can. Uh, in that case, just as you're pulling alongside and getting close to the Martin, uh, Martin's Reach and the Crito, the ship explodes. Uh, oh, oh, no. Dealing a significant amount of damage, which you'll get to see before we cut away. We oh, did. We were at yellow alert, and shields were up. So our shields are up. Thankfully, yes. Thank God <laughs> for a nice commander, right? Uh, why am I here? It's not the right place. There we go. Because yeah, captain's need... bad about asking for that. 
Yeah, I'm really <laughs> And we don't have a tactical great. officer right now. I'm really bad about going to yellow. Yeah, this will be good. Because maybe, well... Haha, -ha, we tank and... all of that. Doop. Does not matter. We tank literally all of it. Nice. <laughs> it matters. It matters because a vessel just blew up. Oh, true. where are your feelers at? Uh, that's two, that's five. Still nope. doesn't matter, we tank all of it. Efric shows up and is even more confused about that. <laughs> Efric shows up two hours, Efric shows up ten minutes late to the firefight with coffee. And I'll note, uh, that even though the sh the shields took the hit, but you've lost three power. Hmm. Oh. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, we're at ten power. We're at standard power. <laughs> we're at we're we, we are at a not a a decent power level. And that will be the first part of Shadows of Garnet.